Lordstown's board reshuffle has allowed it to resist this week's market drag so far. Hi again everyone, I hope you're all doing really well. Lordstown Motors, ticker symbol RIDE or RIDE, has been one of my longer term EV players and while they have been a little quiet on the news front for quite a while, this week there has been some new executive appointments to the board via Edward Hightower as the new CEO and of lesser significance the appointment of Donna Bell as the new executive vice president of product creation, engineering and supply chain. The appointments come at an interesting time as it is this current third quarter that Lordstown Motors are meant to finally commence production of their endurance pickup truck vehicle, or as we would call it down in Australia, a ute. There's a bit of cross-cultural knowledge for you all. The appointments both bring executive experience from Ford, with Hightower also having spent some time at General Motors as well. Pleasingly, the stock did not take a hit from these appointments as the Lordstown team members fulfilling these roles previously are staying within the company, chief amongst them being Daniel Ninavagi, who has perhaps done the most so far to pull Lordstown away from the brink when he joined the company as CEO about 12 months ago. Ninavagi is staying on as executive chairman and will have a focus on partnerships and capital raisings, an area which he has so far excelled in through his perhaps company life-saving deal with Foxconn and is undertaking further work around a potential capital raising, um, which I'll talk about a little bit later in the video. The new appointments bring in fresh experience to the fledging company at a critical time and allow existing talents to specialise in their areas of strength. The stock price has reacted positively to the news so far, with Lordstown stock price resisting broader market drags and demonstrating improvement in trading so far this week, as the stock has regained its position from the early sell-off experienced on Monday. This is in spite of most growth stocks lagging and tougher than expected inflation figures being posted on Wednesday, which have dragged on the broader market. Some technical indicators such as the MACD are showing positive momentum in the face of slightly oversold conditions in the RSI and Bollinger Bands. If we zoom out, we are seeing a bit of a channel emerging in recent times with the stock seeming to hit a ceiling around the $1.90 price point, but seems to be retreating less so with each cycle and is starting to post a series of higher lows. I think if we get positive developments around the production schedule, we should see the $1.90 ceiling rebroken and sustained move above $2 would likely be expected as the company leaves its pre-revenue stage. Not that we can totally bank on what is being publicly released, but I think the last 12 months have been a real transformation for Lordstown Motors. There is still an issue with needing more capital to begin production, an issue the company has been vocal about since the finalising of the Foxconn deal, which saw them sell their warehouse to the company as part of their partnership. The source of this capital will likely be resolved on August 17 when the company holds a vote over the issue of selling a further 150 million Class A shares. While such a vote is going to be crucial to securing the necessary funds to begin production, it is an event that will bring about some dilution to the underlying value of the stock, especially given that the warehouse has now been removed from the balance sheet. But in the scheme of things, if it is the last equity raising Lordstown needs to undertake, it is probably the right move. I think given the popularity of pickup trucks and the limited EV range of them currently available in the market, Lordstown has a real opportunity to make inroads into this market space. This will then present other issues with providing networks for serviceability of their vehicles, which I believe they have formed some preliminary partnerships around, but I will have to look deeper into that issue. I suppose it's a future hurdle that the company will need to overcome. Switching to some analyst reviews, the current consensus based on five analysts covering the stock is to hold, with price targets that range between $1 and $2 per share, the median price being $1.50 per share, where the stock is currently trading above that point at the moment. But for all these analyst projections, there hasn't been an updated guidance for a few months now. So now that the third quarter is underway, the outcomes of this equity raising vote on August 17 and developments around the beginning of production will be key events to look out for. While there won't be any earnings to report on, it will be useful to get an updated view of the Lordstown Motors books. Currently, this results release is scheduled for the 10th of August, one week prior to the vote. Um, personally, I have been accruing the stock for a while now. I know it is a riskier play, but I believe there are good signs that the company is shaping up to finally start delivering these vehicles. So I'm optimistic about the stock. I think given the limited competition that they will have in their niche market early on and the fact that they are making a jump into this space ahead of a number of other major automakers still makes me think there is an opportunity with this stock. 
Given the distribution partnership they will receive via Foxconn, particularly with markets outside of the US, as well as the industry-rich experience board that Lordstown is forming, um, the endurance has a lot of positives going for it. Anyway, I'll leave it at that for this update on ride stock. Um, how are you all feeling about Lordstown Motors? Do you think production will indeed begin this quarter? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Until next time, everyone, may the markets trade in your favour. Cheers.